All right, so what you want to do first is you want to um, define commercial fishing. So maybe have your, your title, let it be, you know, commercial fishing. So that's your title and then um, the first thing you want to do is define co commercial fishing. So you come here and you define commercial fishing. So basically you're saying you know, commercial fishing is the process by which um, mass fish are caught right, for a commercial gain, or for profit. Then you want to talk about the different um, Briefly mention the um, fishing methods, uh, some fishing methods, let's say maybe three even, I'll put in brackets three, three fishing methods. Now this may include your own method as well. So let's say the three fishing methods you chose was troll, fishing, um, line fishing, and uh, net fishing. So you briefly talk about what all of these types of fishing are. So you started commercial fishing is this, and the types are these three types, and how do they work briefly? Then you want to go to the method that you have chosen. Now let's say you choose troll fishing, and you want to leave it at that. So don't use first person. Don't use things like the method I have chosen is this. Just say the method that's going to be researched is troll fishing okay and then you define what troll fishing is in more depth because you had briefly de defined it before but now you want to go in depth in depth maybe um this could even be maybe two slides you know approximately two slides so you've defined it and then have a beautiful little diagram Can't change the color but just include a diagram of what troll fishing looks like all right now you want to explain how the method works so that maybe even that you could have the diagram you could explain that down there so you could include the diagram here and explain how it works all right what species are targeted is it salmon? Is it salmon and cod? Or is it all three? Or maybe it's a different species altogether. Remember to look at those documents I sent you. There's data, there's graphs, and a lot of information you can use and bring that here. Don't just say a lot of salmon is caught. How much salmon? There must be some evidence there, and it is there. You check, and you use numbers in your report. Even sometimes graphs. I know for a fact I sent you documents with some beautiful graphs you could add, depending on what method you choose. Okay, environmental impact and management. All right, so how does this impact the environment, both positive and negative? What are the advantages? What are the disadvantages? All right, of all of this, on the environment, it's good maybe because it's 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 um feeding a lot of people maybe in third world countries maybe. It's disadvantaged because it's getting rid of the coral and all these nurseries, fish nurseries, you know, which allow fish to develop. That's maybe a bad thing. Okay? Um, or maybe it impacts the whole uh, ecosystem. Remember the food webs you guys drew last term? You could draw a food web of your salmon and how it's getting impacted. That's extra stuff you could add. Okay. Are there any scientific or technological advancements? How have they improved this? For example, line fishing. They are rare birds that get, remember last time I was talking about those rare birds that get killed, but they're not even the target. So this very ingenious guy, he decided to add some, um, I think it was shiny, some shiny plastic on the line of the fish, of the line that, that's thrown out of the boat. That line sometimes is kilometers long. And um, what, that hap what, that made, um, what that allowed is that the birds did not actually go to that line because they, they were afraid of it. And so then the rare birds were not caught. Those kind of advancements, you know. Sometimes it might be simple. It doesn't need to be so um, elegant. 
or technological, all right? As long as it helps, you know, reduce the impact in the environment, okay? And yet allow you to do fishing, to be able to sustain the population, but have minimal impact, okay? Use diagrams, all right? All that stuff is there. Do they impact positively or negatively, or both? You could, you could try and argue both. Is it positive? Is it negative? Maybe you could give examples of both. And how is it going to be impacted in the distant future? Okay? So what's going to happen? If this is the amount of fish we are collecting now, next year, how many fish you know, will we collect? Right. Make a recommendation as to whether the new advancements should be implemented. Uh, implemented. Now, with these recommendations, try and find research. If you can't find any, maybe you can be creative and try and recommend it. But then give a reason why. You've got to justify your decision. So you could give a reason. Maybe you are really creative and you came up with this thing that you think might work. Right? Then you find research to justify how it could work from a scientist or a website somewhere. Alright? So you could use research. Make a recommendation and justify it. Justifying is very important. That's going to be the difference between an A and a B. And I'm going to show you that criteria sheet in a second. Diagram of the method, that's already done. You know, so this is... So let's say, you could even include another diagram. So let's say you had a diagram at the very top of troll fishing, right? You could have another diagram of a modification, right? How could this get better? Like, remember the, the one on troll fishing? They said that they put that net all the way on the sea floor. Right? And so your first diagram would be a net on the sea floor. And then the second diagram, they said, because we have sonar, we can know the depth of the sea. And so instead of dragging the net on the floor, sea floor, and um, getting rid of all that coral and disturbing the environment, you just let it go 100 meters above the sea uh, floor. And what that allows is that we don't, then, we don't disturb the coral and the sea grass. You see? And then you draw a different diagram with 100 meters above the sea floor. So you've shown that, that new advancement or your recommendation. That's not a hard recommendation. You could have co uh, come up with that, right? That it makes sense. If this thing is dragging on the sea floor, lift it a bit, right? And bibliography, I want you to try and use cite this for me. Okay, give it a shot. You just go on Google, type cite this for me. It's a website. And it'll allow you to make references. So it'll put your references in a specific style. I want you to pick Harvard referencing. It'll ask you what type of referencing. All right? I want us all to learn Harvard referencing first. And then, over time, I'll teach you APA and how to write footnotes and all this stuff. And it's a very, very important thing to be able to do. You need to reference stuff and cite things correctly because it shows that you have, uh, your, your research is reliable. Okay? And make sure you have at least, or oh, I'd say maximum of, so of seven references, minimum five. Okay? So it says, are you going to present research in a report? If you are doing it in a report, um, just make sure you have some titles. If it's a poster, you, know, you could have a huge poster and make sure you, you could, you could kind of make it like a mosaic. So if you had to do the report, use titles. Right? And make sure you, and diagrams obviously. Use titles, diagrams, as you would do in the PowerPoint. But just on a Word document. Pretty much the same thing. The difference one with the poster might be that, you know, you might have to print something out and then paste it over there. Maybe that's the image. And then you have a big commercial fishing one there. Right? And then you have more information. Let's say you have some notes here. Right? And then you have a big diagram here or something. It's up to you. Okay? You would, the, a report won't get more marks than a poster, which will not get more marks than a PowerPoint. Alright? It's just what you prefer. And um, one last thing is the criteria sheet so i just quickly want to have a look at this so look here this is really important so the difference here between an a and a b we'll forget about the c for now here it's informed where this one is justified so you have given a reason why you have said something if you say that um the fish 
the, the fish are affected negatively. That's not justified. Justify why it is, you know? Give many reasons, more than one maybe. All right, so that's the main difference there. You can see that the rest of the words are the same. There's only one word that's different. A is justified, whereas B is informed. Okay, let's look at the second part of it. What's different? This one's informed again. This one is an explanation. So are you just making a statement, or are you actually going in depth and explaining this thing? Is it an accurate summary, or just summaries? Relevant data. Data means what? Numbers, figures, graphs. Right? Use that. If you miss, if you don't have that, you probably won't get some marks. You might miss a few. Okay? So, I want to use that, and I've given you those resources. If you check on the different fish, the, the fish that are caught, there's graphs and figures that you could use. You don't need many. And make recommendations. That's really, that, that's part of what I just talked about before. Make justified predictions of what you think will happen. Or if there's already research conducted, what do they think is going to happen in the near future? Predictions about the future, you know? You could even go over here and maybe talk about a bit about the past, present, and future. So it flows really well. In um, senior biology, I, this comes up a lot and we talk about past, present, future. Okay, and it's a good skill to have. Concise and co coherent. So the difference here, that one's just coherent. This one has the extra concise. What does that mean? That means that it's actually, you're not repeating yourself too much. You get to the point and uh, try and make it sweet and not too long. Okay? At the same time, you don't want it too short. You don't want one sentence things. You want to have hit all the other criteria I just spoke about. But at the same time, you want it to be concise. And that's basically all of it. I'm, I'm confident you can all get that. Now, next week, in a, on Tuesday and Wednesday, I'm going to stick around in the library. If you want to come and you know ask me questions or work with your friends, you're very much welcome to do so. Are there any questions? Okay.